I cannot talk about my experiences at the school I attended in Florida because I'm a transgender woman and they made that illegal. And they want to make that illegal nationally. They want to make this message I'm telling you right now an illegal message. They want me to be imprisoned for talking to you about my experiences. This is what they're writing. This is what they think of transgender people. This is what they think of transgender communities. They think we are less than. They think we are less than the rest of the citizens. They think they can erase our citizenship. They think they can erase our identity. They think they can erase us. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is a trans moment with Brandy Beckett. Today, we are going to continue our discussion about Project 2025 and how that Project 2025 is attacking transgender communities and individuals. So Project 2025, we talked about it in the previous video. So if you haven't seen it, go back. I'll leave a link at the end of this video to that video. In the previous video, we talk about Project 2025 and the Heritage Foundation, the architects for Project 2025. And we talk about their connections to the Bush administration, the Reagan administration, and the Trump administration. We talked about how they got started, what they are after, and what they are doing to accomplish their goals. And that is all coming to fruition in this project 2025. It has been a 50 year project, 50 years they've been working on some of this stuff that they're implementing in the Trump administration. If Trump is elected, he will use this project 2025 as his platform. Trump has no other platforms projected for him to use. This is the only game out there for him to use, and he will use it. He has no issues with the material in Project 2025. In fact, the people who wrote Project 2025 come out of Trump's world. 66 employees of the Heritage Foundation went to work for the Trump administration. The Heritage Foundation recommended most of Trump's cabinet. They recommended senators like Jeff Sessions. They recommended Mick Mulvaney. They recommended so many chairs in their administration. Heritage Foundation had a hand in the first Trump administration, and they want to take the reins during Trump's, if he has a second administration. Heritage Foundation is ready to take the reins and control the policies starting in day one. And their number one promise the Heritage Foundation's number one promise to America is, and I'm going to quote them here, we'll read it here. Restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. That is their number one promise. And notice, that is very vague language. Protect our children from what? And what is this centerpiece? What is it? What is the centerpiece structured around? That part, that's the part that's scary. When they lay out their hands and place their cards on the table and they show us what they mean by a centerpiece of family life, American family life, their 
idea of American family life. It does not include me. It does not include transgender people. It does not include gay families. It does not include LGBTQIA people. This ideology of the American family is an ideology of a mythology that never actually existed for all of us Americans. It is a binary, boxed in, described group of a family that does not describe America. It does not describe our diversity. It does not describe our love and the way we can structure families in our society. What it does do is it ex excludes groups of people for who they are and how they express themselves. That is what is at the heart of the centerpiece of American family in this MAGA-fueled Project 2025 platform. And when they say protect the children, they're not saying we're going to protect them from the number one reason children under the age of 18 die in our country. Gun violence. They're not protecting the children from gun violence. There's no protection anywhere in this Project 2025 for gun violence against children. There's no protection against parental abuse against children. Their idea of protecting children is excluding transgender and non-binary people from society and our culture. They want to pretend that gay marriages are, don't exist. They want to pretend that transgender people don't exist. In this idea of protect the children and focus on a centerpiece of the family life for America, their idea is to otherize and exclude American citizens who belong right there in that picture of American life, of American family. I'm an American. I am a transgender woman, and I'm also an American citizen. I'm an American citizen who is married. I have a husband. I should have all of the rights as any other American citizen. All transgender people should have that right. We should have the right to health care. We should have the right to legal marriages. We should have the right to love who we love. That should be an American value that we put at the top, not a reason to exclude individuals and communities. But that is what is going to happen if Project 2025 is used as a platform to guide us into the future. This is just sad, folks. So let's talk a little bit more about Project 2025 and this attack on the transgender community. They're attacking on many fronts. So they're attacking transgender communities and individuals through education bills, excluding transgender children from getting a proper education, using proper facilities at learning institutions so they can be a whole and productive student. They want to deny that. They want to say transgender children should be excluded from other children's activities. They want to exclude transgender children and adults from accessing health care. They want that nationally. Nationally, they want to deny us health care. American citizens, they want 
to have the Justice Department target us as criminals. And they want to put us in prison for existing, expressing who we are, and talking about who we are. For those acts, according to Project 2025, they want to imprison us for doing that. That is not an American value. That is not an American way. We should not value such ideology that excludes and criminalizes people for existing and expressing who they are. This is not the American way, people. Look, they're going so hard after transgender people that they are comparing us, our existence, to being obscene. And when I mean obscene, I mean equal it pornography. In their sense of the use of pornography being obscene should not be looked at. I know. Most, most decent people have a different view of pornography. But if you read Project 2025, they want to outlaw pornography, the distribution of pornography, mailing of pornography. Basically, and literally, they are going to bring back the Comstock Acts that made it illegal to possess and distribute pornographic material. They're bringing that back. And not only are they bringing back outlawing pornographic material, but they are equating transgender individuals with said material. They are dehumanizing us and equating us with obscene pornography and making that criminal and requesting that the Justice Department imprison transgender activists transgender individuals for existing and talking about their experiences. This is frightening, folks. And this is not me speaking of, in a hyperbolic manner. This is what they want to happen. And it is already happening in states that are influenced by this same ideology. I started my academic career in Tampa, Florida, where I went to Hillsborough Community College. And after receiving my Associate of Arts degree from HCC, I earned a full ride scholarship to Mount Holyoke College, where I became one of the first transgender women to ever graduate from that prestigious all women's college. And I discovered my gender identity while I was a student at HCC in Tampa, Florida. And I want to go back to HCC to give a talk. The president of the Honors Institute spoke with me personally about how she would love to have me there to talk, but it's not allowed by the laws there in Florida. The administration of the my school, my alma mater, cannot legally bring me back to their campus and talk about my experiences. I cannot talk about my experiences at the school I attended in Florida because I'm a transgender woman and they made that illegal. And they want to make that illegal nationally. They want to make this message I'm telling you right now an illegal message. They want me to be imprisoned for talking to you about my experiences as a transgender woman, my discovery of my gender identity and expressing that identity that I discovered in me. 
They are going to make that illegal. They want to put me in prison for existing. I am not speaking hyperbolically about this situation. This is what they're writing. This is what they think of transgender people. This is what they think of transgender communities. They think we are less than. They think we are less than the rest of the citizens. They think they can erase our citizenship. They think they can erase our identity. They think they can erase us. This must not happen, people. If you've made it this far in this video and you have any sort of empathy for transgender individuals to survive in our society, please like, share, and subscribe this video. Share it. Subscribe to my channel. We need to get these messages out there because they're important. People's lives are at stake. And this Project 2025 does not care about our lives. They equate us with obscenity that should be outlawed in their opinion. That is dehumanizing. That is otherizing. And that should not be allowed here in these United States. I'm gonna leave you, as I always do, with this message. Love yourself, but more importantly, like yourself. And treat people the way they want to be treated. Bye-bye for now.